talked about the faith that you have in the young men and women who are, are in the armed forces, and that made me think of a number of retired admirals and generals who are working with researchers to find out why 75% of the young men and women between the ages of 17 and 24 are unfit for service, and a huge part of the problem is obesity. It's a, it's a societal problem for us, and it certainly trickles over into recruiting for our military. It's important, I think, for all of us as Americans to remember that in our constitutional system, where we have civilian control of the military, it's, we, we derive our military from the population that it serves. And so if our population is obese, that's the crowd that we go to to try to uh, recruit. Uh, if our population isn't well educated, that's the crowd that we go to to try to recruit. And so it's in all of our best interest to address these societal problems. It's also important, I think, now that, that most people in leadership positions, in fact, most people in our country have not served in the military. Post-World War II, that was completely different. I don't know about your family, but I'll bet that somewhere in your family you uncles, had... Uncles, yes. Of course, you had uncles who served, you know, grandfather, maybe people who served in World War II, whatever the case may be. Uh, either our, our, our fathers did, our grandparents did, our aunts and uncles, our brothers and sisters, uh, because that was the nature of the size of the military back then. But the all the volunteer force were in a different place, and that different place means that as a general rule, our American society doesn't understand the military very well. We, we, by the way, commend the warriors themselves, and I think that if there's anything that's been a huge positive through Iraq and Afghanistan, it's been the outpouring of affection from America across the board at every level, from every corner, really, uh, for the other, warriors. For um, other warriors. Unlike from anything wars. we saw since World War II, I would, yeah. I would argue, and not so for Korea, certainly not for Vietnam, when I was uh, at the end of which I was going to school here. And uh, even Gulf War I and other activities we've been in, I think uh, the outpouring of affection has been tremendous. But the, the depth of the understanding of who the warriors are and what they do and how they do it and why it's important and where the investment is needed, I think is a real problem for us. And, and uh, as a result, people's perception of the military are being shaped in other ways. So it's a real effort on part of the military to try to open its doors more, sit in forums like this, for example, and talk about what they do and why they do it and who they are. Because if, if you only look at the Hollywood version, uh, you have no idea, I think, who we, I can say even though I'm retired, who we really are, where we've come from, why we're there, what we think is important uh, for why we continue to serve. And I think that, that uh, that's going to be a problem for us as we go forward.